Traditionally, building a model railroad layout was a noisy, dirty job requiring skill with power tools. Not anymore. Using the revolutionary Woodland Scenic Subterrain System, anyone can build a state-of-the-art layout in just five easy steps. Step one, install risers. Step two, install inclines. Step three, install profile boards. Step four, install sheet goods. Step five, add plaster cloth over paper wads and then add track bed. And you can do it anywhere, even in the family or rec room. Before we actually begin construction, let's take a look at the tools and materials we'll be working with. Foam nails are sturdy two inch steel T-pins, 75 in a package. They're indispensable for holding various components in place until you're ready to install them permanently. Use foam pencils to mark on foam so marks can be seen without causing damage or bleed through paint. With both red and black pencils four to a package, you can use one color to draw your track plan and the other color to indicate electrical wiring or other layout features. The hot wire foam cutter quickly and easily cuts through our special high density foam without emitting toxic fumes. The hot wire cutter features lock-in rods, an easy grip handle, and automatic shutoff. The easy to adjust wire allows you to cut at various angles and thicknesses. A bow and guide add versatility to the hot wire cutter. Attach the guide to either the rods or the bow wire cutter, and you can make accurate cuts of any angle. Special nichrome replacement wire is available in four foot lengths. A foam knife with two inch replaceable blades is ideal for cutting straight edges and thick pieces of foam. The low temp foam glue gun and glue sticks are specifically designed to adhere to foam without melting it as higher temperature guns and mini adhesives will do. It sets up quickly. Use the low temp glue gun to glue along edges of foam or on flat surfaces. Foam tack glue is particularly useful for surface to surface gluing and will dry in places where other glues fail. It's a high tack glue that dries clear and flexible. Plaster cloth. Just what its name implies, makes a hard terrain shell. It comes in a 10 square foot roll. Smooth it can be used to level and smooth any rough areas and is also used for roads, foundations and sidewalks. Foam putty has the same characteristics as foam. It can be molded right out of the container and sanded or carved when dry. Flex paste is a smooth, flexible material that seals and waterproofs any surface and dries to a hard, protective shell. The subterrain system contains all the specially formulated high-density foam products needed to create a layout. We'll tell you about each product as we use it to build subterrain. Now, let's build a layout. Before you begin the five easy steps, there's a little preparation to do. You need a track plan. You can devise your own plan in any scale. Use the one in the subterrain book or use one from the many track plan books available. Next, you need a base for your layout. In this demonstration, we're using a half inch thick piece of plywood. If you want to, you can build framework underneath and add legs. The important thing is to keep the layout flat during construction. Before assembling track, measure a minimum of two and a half inches in from each edge of the base. 
The outer edge of the track must be at least that far from the edges to fit everything in. Assemble the track according to your plan. Pin it down with foam nails. Draw around the track with a foam pencil. Indicate bridges, turnouts, and any other special track areas. If you're using flexible track instead of rigid sectional track, draw the track center line on the base where your plan indicates. While you're at it, use a foam pencil to indicate proposed sites for tunnels, mountains, roads, towns, and so on if you know where they're going to be placed. These can be changed later. After you've drawn the track outline, remove the track. Now you're ready for the first of five easy steps. Step one, install risers. Risers are the critical first step in the successful completion of a dynamic layout. Risers are highly flexible blocks of high density foam used to elevate the track. They're two and a half inches wide, 24 inches long, and come in four heights, one half, one, two, and four inches. Risers open the door to dramatic scenery possibilities. The surrounding areas are now lower than the track areas, allowing you to easily create creeks, ravines, and other low-line areas without cutting into the layout base. To install risers, center them over the track outline you've drawn on the base, butting section ends together. Pin sections down with foam nails. We're going to use risers for roads too, but we'll get to that later when we see where they need to go. We recommend using at least a two inch riser to elevate your track. This will provide moderate elevation for gradual relief, hills and creek beds. To determine how much you need, look at your plan and determine the total feet of track. You'll need the same number of feet in risers. For a more dramatic landscape, use a 4-inch riser to give you maximum elevation for steep relief, rivers, and valleys. 1-half-inch and 1-inch risers are generally used in conjunction with incline starters. Step 2. Install inclines. Incline sets and incline starters are flexible, tapered sections, 2.5 inches wide, 24 inches long, and come in both 2 and 4 percent grades. Incline simply take your track from one level to another in both straight and curved areas, eliminating the complicated calculations usually required to create grades and curves. Most layouts will use incline sets. 2% incline sets, shown in red, rise from 0 to 4 inches in 16 feet and are for use in unlimited spaces and when pulling heavier loads. 4% sets shown in blue, rise from 0 to 4 inches in only 8 feet, so they allow higher elevations in limited areas. Incline starters, in 2 and 4 percent, are simply the first section of incline sets and add versatility to a layout. In this illustration, you can see them used in a stair-step fashion with risers. 4 percent starters, shown in blue, are used in combination with 1-inch risers and 2% starters, shown in red, are used in combination with one half inch risers. We'll show you a lot more about them later. To install inclines, center them over the risers and pin them in place. As you can see, there is a gap in the turnout area. Fill this gap with a piece of foam. 
To cut this transition piece, lay a piece of paper over or under the gap and trace the outline of the missing section. Trace on foam the triangular shape you traced on paper. Cut the foam piece out and pin it down. Use as many pieces as necessary to bring the turnout up to the same height as the connecting riser. Once the inclines and risers are in place, it's time to test the track. Pin it in place. Now do a test run. Make any adjustments so the train runs smoothly. In this area, the riser and incline need to be moved over just a little bit so that the center lines of track and incline match. The subterrain system allows you to change your mind or easily make any needed adjustments. On any electrically activated turnout, mark the position on the riser or incline where wiring will be attached. When you're satisfied with the positioning and have marked the locations mentioned, remove the track. You can glue risers and inclines now, or if you're unsure about your layout's design, wait until step four. Glue risers and inclines down with the low temp foam glue and low temp glue gun to permanently install them. Low temp foam glue sets up quickly and will not melt foam. At the beginning of the first incline section, you may want to use foam tack glue for a very smooth start. Remove any excess glue from the riser and the incline. If you're concerned about any gaps or rough spots on risers and inclines, fill and smooth with foam putty. When dry, sand with number 120 or finer grit sandpaper. Step three, install profile boards. Profile boards surround the layout and will support the terrain surface when it's added later. Profile boards are eight inches tall and two feet long. Their unique construction allows you to easily create straight sides and any profile of any height on all four edges of the layout. Profile boards interlock at the corners when the second piece is turned upside down. If you wish, you can use the Bowen guide to miter the profile board's corners. Pin the first row of profile boards to the base and use connectors to join the sections to be placed side by side or stacked on top of each other to create a higher profile. You can use a piece of foam for backing to prevent indentations from finger pressure. Add as many rows as you need to reach the height you want for your layout's profile. Now glue the profile boards to the layout base and to each other.
You can now create the layout's profile if you know what you want it to look like. If you're unsure, wait until step five. With a foam pencil, draw the desired profile on the exterior of the profile boards. Use the hot wire cutter to easily cut along the lines you've drawn, contouring the profile boards. Use a sawing motion to cut faster. Woodland Scenic's specifically formulated high-density foam is non-toxic, even when cut with a hot wire cutter. Cutting the profile boards would be a good place to use the bow accessory. To save material, you may want to turn the cut-off pieces upside down and use them at the front of the layout or wherever the profile is lower. With this system, changes and adjustments are quick and easy at any time. If you don't like what you see, recut them. Of course, you can also glue a piece back on. Wherever track will pass through a tunnel, Cut an access hole with the foam knife so you can put the train back on the track if it derails in this area. Access holes can also provide an exit for wiring to the power supply. In a previous step, we marked the exact position where the wiring will connect. Now, it's time to run the wiring down the sides and along the bases of risers and inclines to the power supply. Step four, install sheet goods. Sheet goods are foam sheets that are available in thicknesses of one quarter, one half, one, two, three, and four inches. We'll use sheet goods to build a tunnel. But first, we need to cover the tunnel risers with plaster cloth because we won't be able to easily reach them later. Then, install track bed and track in the same area. Later, we'll show you in more detail how to use plaster cloth and install track bed and track. Now we're ready for the tunnel. Measure clearances and cut sheet goods to the correct height or width. The National Model Railroad Association has established clearance specifications so the train cars don't get stuck. Woodland Scenics portals in both HO and in scale meet these specifications, so using them is an easy way to ensure needed clearances when building a tunnel. We're using scrap foam spacers for added gluing surfaces and to ensure the correct tunnel width is maintained. Glue straight walls in place. Highly flexible quarter-inch sheets are great for curved walls. Take time to gently flex them back and forth to loosen them up. Pin them in place and then glue. Glue tunnel roof in place. Where necessary, piece sections together. Use sheet goods to create level, elevated areas for building sites, towns, and industries. Determine the shape you need and cut it out with the hot wire cutter or the foam knife. For a large area, use several sheets of foam.
use scrap foam to elevate the area to the desired height and glue it all together. If you want, use sheet foam as supports for the profile boards. This will also help you visualize the desired terrain. Cut the supports to follow your projected terrain contours and glue them in place. Now it's time to connect the future building sites for towns and industries with roads. Streets and roads can go almost anywhere, climb faster than track, and twist and turn. You can use risers or inclines either alone or together, depending on your layout's requirements. A model road doesn't carry much weight, so you can simply glue the riser at the top and bottom and place scrap foam supports where needed. It all will be covered with a supportive surface in the next step. Step 5. Add plaster cloth and track bed. Fill in the open areas with paper wads placing them between the supports for the profile boards if you use them. A pillow-shaped wad seems to work the best. Just roll the edges under and toward the center. You can use masking tape to hold the wads in place. If you can't quite visualize the finished terrain, you can always lay a piece of newspaper over everything and spray it with water to make the paper conform to the shape of the wads. This will show you what the terrain will look like. Add or remove paper wads where needed. If you haven't already cut the layout profile, do so now. Now you're ready to use plaster cloth to make a hard shell. Plaster cloth is bumpy on one side and smoother on the other. Always place the bumpy side up so there is a lot of plaster available to spread and smooth. Cut some manageable lengths of plaster cloth. Dip a strip in water to activate the plaster. Beginning at one corner, place plaster cloth over the paper wads. Smooth it with your hands to distribute the plaster evenly. Where plaster cloth meets the profile board, fold over or under about one half to one inch and press down for a neat, clean edge. Overlap the next piece about 50% for sturdiness. Continue until the entire layout is covered. If you're concerned about extra smoothness in the track area, lay those pieces separately, allowing the ends of the pieces to overlap the existing plaster cloth. When dry, plaster cloth forms a sturdy, hard shell. If you use plaster cloth over foam that is not Woodland Scenics foam, you may have to sand its surface to roughen it so that the plaster cloth will adhere. You can also use plaster cloth to make a smooth hard surface on the exterior of your layout. But first, if you didn't miter the corners, fill the outside corner voids on the profile boards with foam putty. Use foam nails to pin the lowest portion in place, butting the ends together. Where you've cut access holes, remove the foam and cut the plaster cloth as we're doing. Spray the plaster cloth with water and smooth with your hands.
Place additional rows of plaster cloth in position, butting sides and ends as before. Either smooth the top edge over the existing plaster cloth layer, or trim the top of the last row to match the profile board's contours. Put a second layer over the first in the same way. If desired, you can even add a third layer for extra protection. When dry, you can sand any wrinkles or bumps and wipe with a damp rag to remove sanding dust. Now lay track on top of plaster cloth and pin it down. Hook up the wiring and test the train again. Make adjustments if needed. Then trace around the track on the plaster cloth. Remove the track. Next, add track bed. Track bed is a revolutionary product that is highly flexible, resisting breakage. Woodland Scenics track bed provides quieter operation because it's made from a sound deadening material. It also provides a smoother operation by cushioning vibrations. Track bed is easier to use than other road beds because it can be tacked or glued down. It is very flexible, no soaking is required, and it will not dry out or crumble. Listen as we compare the sound deadening qualities of homosote, cork, and woodland scenics track bed laid on plywood. To install track bed, squeeze out a line of foam tack glue and spread it in a thin, even layer with no lumps. Center track bed on the track outline. If necessary, around tight curves, separate the track bed sections along the pre-cut center line and lay the strips individually, butting them together in the center. Repin in place until dry. You can also use low melt glue and gun to lay track bed. Just do one section at a time and be sure to spread the glue evenly so there are no lumps. To make a neat tight fit where tracks will meet, overlap the track bed sections and cut through both layers at the same time. Discard the ends and the pieces underneath that were cut. It's time to lay track using foam tack glue. Pin sections down until dry. Be sure not to get glue in any moving parts of switches and turnouts. Wherever a road crosses the track, the road needs to be the same height as the top of the rails. First, trim the track bed to the ties. Then on both sides of the track, place portions of incline starters cut off to the height of the rails. Glue them down. Cover with plastic cloth as before. Allow to dry thoroughly and the road is ready to be surfaced and finished. And that completes the subterrain. With the Woodland Scenic Subterrain System, you've created a complete subterrain in five easy steps, and you've had fun doing it. The Woodland Scenic Subterrain System even includes a road system with all the tools and materials needed to build realistic roads, streets, parking lots, curbs, wherever a paving material is used. It can be used over any material, even an existing layout. Paving tape is a foam back tape used to form the temporary boundaries or forms for paving. 
It also allows the modeler to easily spread and level the paving mixture by pulling the spreader along the tape strips. Paving tape comes in a 30-foot roll a quarter inch wide. It even comes with a spreader. Foam Smooth It, mixed with water, makes a paving material. The spreader is used to apply and level the paving material easily and smoothly. After drying, Smooth It can be sanded. Then it's finished with either asphalt or concrete top coat. Just paint them on for a highly realistic appearance. Now that you've seen the materials, let's construct the paving. First, draw the foundations. To keep the road width uniform, we made a simple tool to draw its boundaries. Also draw sidewalks and parking areas. Place paving tape strips on both sides of where the road will be. Then tape the rest of the paved areas. The tape forms the road's boundaries. Mix a batch of foam Smooth It, following package instructions. Spread Smooth It evenly between the strips. You can use the convenient spreader included with the foam tape. Simply rest the spreader across the tape strips and pull for a nice, even road. Smooth It can be used over any surface. Just remove any loose materials before spreading. For an extra smooth surface, mist with water. Let the surface dry. Then patch if necessary and lightly sand. If you are adding raised sidewalks with curbs and flat building areas as we are in this demonstration, leave the perimeter tape in place. Determine the width of the sidewalk and curbs. Run a piece of paving tape along the previously paved area to frame in the sidewalk. Place a strip of paving tape on top of the existing perimeter strips of tape. Pave between the tape strips, resting the spreader on the tape strips and pulling evenly. When paving is dry, remove the tape and lightly sand with a fine grit sandpaper to remove any bumps. Wipe to remove the sanding dust. Paint the asphalt paved areas with asphalt top coat from the subterrain system. Paint sidewalks and other concrete areas such as foundations with concrete top coat. Cut a strip of styrene to fit between the molded in spikes on the inside of the rails. The styrene strip should be slightly lower than the rails and cut to the width of the road. Paint the strip to match the road and attach it. This can also be done with a thin piece of foam prepared in the same manner. If you wish, you can age and weather the pavement and add lane markings. Age asphalt top coat by folding number 220 sandpaper to the width of one tire and gently stroking the top coat lengthwise twice on each lane. Age concrete by rubbing a graphite pencil on coarse sandpaper and applying the powdered graphite to the paving with your fingers. On this demonstration layout, you've seen the basics of the subterrain system. Now, here are some special situations where the subterrain components can be used to great advantage. You can use risers, incline sets, and incline starters in any combination to achieve various grades and intermittent flat areas. This flexibility makes even the most complex layout simple to construct. Here are a few combinations possible with a 2% incline set shown in white. In this area, to get a 4% grade, we added a 2% starter shown in red 
to the incline set section. To get a level area on the next section, we reverse the 2% starter. To get a 6% grade here, we added a 4% incline starter, shown in blue, to the 2% incline set section. Here are some of the combinations possible with a 4% incline set, shown in gray. Here we have one inch risers in place and wanted to go from a 2% to a 4% grade in 36 inches. To do that, we used a 2% incline starter in red and a half of a 4% incline starter in blue to increase the grade and rise from one inch to two inch. To reach a 6% grade in the next section, we placed a riser, shown in green, under the 4% incline set section, shown in gray, and a 2% starter in red on top of it. To get an 8% grade at the high end, we used two risers under two 4% starters, shown in blue. These illustrations are just a sample of the infinite combinations that are possible. Remember, the steeper the grade, the more trouble the engine will have climbing. Make sure your engine will pull a train up the grade you design. Placing a building on an existing layout in an area that is not level is a situation that is easily handled with sheet goods. Use the building to determine how much area needs to be leveled on the layout. Then mark that area and cut it. Draw building perimeter on sheet foam that is the correct height to level the cut area. Cut the foam piece out and glue it in place. Fill in the gaps and cover with flex paste. Allow it to dry. Since we already have a flat, smooth surface at track level, instead of using Smooth It to create a foundation, we can just set the building in place and landscape around it. If your building is not at track level, use one quarter inch sheet goods to bring them to the desired height. You can use a similar method to modify an existing layout and add new features. We're going to add a building and a road using sheet goods and two inch risers. First, determine where a building is to go. Then you need to level the area and create a foundation for the building. Trace a footprint of the building on the layout and cut the area out. Then trace around the building on a piece of sheet foam. Cut the foam out and place it in position. Now you have a foundation for your building. Next, we'll use two inch risers to build the road. First, decide where the road is to go, then cut into the layout. Remove the cut section of plaster cloth and any excess paper wads.
Position the risers in the groove and tack in place with low temp glue. Remove any landscaping material adjacent to the road. Add paper wads where needed and cover with plaster cloth. Wind dry, paint and add landscaping materials. You've now given new life to your old layout. To install an under the table switch machine, simply do the following. After installing your risers and inclines, cut a notch in the riser or incline and install a piece of hardboard. Then cut a hole in the plywood base for installing and servicing the switch machine. Finish installation according to the manufacturer's instructions. Another situation that occurs is an overpass where a tunnel for a road or a railroad track passes through a riser and or an incline. Cut a notch in the riser and or the incline to support a piece of sheet foam or hardboard and then install. If you're building an in-scale layout, everything is done exactly the same way as we've shown you. But in some situations, you may want to bevel a riser or incline to allow for a runoff ditch. Adjust the guide on the bow to the desired angle and cut. If you're building a mountainous area in in-scale or narrow gauge, there may be an area where you simply want narrower risers and or inclines. You can remove up to one quarter inch from either or both sides. Mark your distance from the edge on both sides of the incline or the riser. Place pieces of cardboard on those lines. Run hot wire cutter along the edges of the cardboard templates using them as a guide. You could also set the wire on the hot wire cutter to the proper depth to cut the unwanted foam away. To lay double track for an in-scale layout, you can simply add strips of one quarter to one half inch sheet goods to risers to build the necessary width. Mark the height of the particular risers on the sheet. Cut the strips out and add them to the outside edge of the riser. On some layouts, banking on curves might be necessary. To do this, simply place shims under the outside edge of the riser or the incline.
Occasionally, a layout is split into two or more levels. The second level may be several inches higher. To connect the various levels by adding roads, use risers and or incline sets and incline starters. You can even make bridges out of sheet foam. Here's how to make a solid bridge. Draw and cut out the templates. Use foam nails to pin the templates to three inch sheet foam. Cut out with the hot wire cutter. You can use one half inch sheet goods to make another kind of bridge. Again, use templates to cut foam out for sides and cut out a road base. Glue the base and sides together with low melt glue. If there are any indentations in the foam, use foam putty to fill. Let it dry, then sand. Cut out some rails and glue them to the bridge. For a hard surface, cover with flex paste. When it's dry, sand with number 120 grit sandpaper. Then paint the bridge with concrete top coat. Paint the road with asphalt. And finally, cut to the desired height. Here are some more ways that you can use the Subterrain product line. Using the Bowen guide with the hot wire cutter, you can cut perfect circles. By moving the collars holding the wire, you can adjust the height up or down to cut foam to any thickness. You can also adjust the collars and cut the foam to various angles.
Use foam sheets to build mock-ups of building kits before you buy them to determine if the shape and size will work on your layout. Then replace them with the real buildings. This will allow you to purchase and assemble buildings with the confidence that they will fit perfectly. We've demonstrated building a very simple layout to you. The subterrain system is easily adapted to creating other scale layouts such as O and N. Now, here's a more advanced multi-level HO scale layout that really shows what the subterrain system can do. Don't be afraid to experiment on your layout. You'll probably find new answers to old problems when you use the Woodland Scenic Subterrain System. When the subterrain is done, you'll want to add some terrain features from the Woodland Scenic's terrain system. Here's a brief overview of the system. Add tunnel portals to the faces of the tunnel entrances. Test fit the portal and cut into the plaster cloth if necessary. Then mix some lightweight hydrocal according to package instructions. Wet both the plaster cloth hard shell and the portal by misting with water for good adhesion. Generously spread the mixture on the back of the portal and place it in position. Use more lightweight hydrocal to fill any gaps. Retaining walls can be used with or without portals to hold back rocks and dirt on any steep slope. They're installed in the same way that portals are. As you can see, we have pre-colored both the portals and retaining walls with Woodland Scenic's Earth Color Liquid Pigments for a natural appearance. You can install some rock outcroppings made with the rock molds and lightweight hydrocal. Decide where rocks are to go and, if necessary, cut a hole in the plaster cloth. Wet the rock in the hard shell. Then spread lightweight hydrocal on the back of the rock and put it in place. Spread more of this mixture where needed to fill in the gaps. When dry, color the rocks with the various colors of earth color liquid pigments. Make a diluted wash with the pigments and dab them in a random pattern like leopard spots on the rocks. Begin with the lightest color and add the darkest color last. Add more layers of washes until you're satisfied with the look. Allow to dry and then use a black wash to make crevices appear deeper. Then seal the colors with scenic cement. Next, color the hard shell with washes of Woodland Scenic's green or earth undercoats to provide a natural colored background. You can use the washes we used on the rocks to leopard spot a dry creek bed. Now, sprinkle ballast down the center of the track and on the edges of the ties and the track bed avoiding areas on the turnouts that need to be able to move. Use a dry brush to gently sweep ballast off the tops of the ties and rails. Gently but thoroughly spray with scenic cement to glue the ballast down. Don't forget to clean the rails with a sanding block and fine sandpaper before running a train on them. Sprinkle rock debris called talus around rock outcroppings. Use scenic cement to adhere it for more information on terrain and landscaping, a book and video are available that will tell you about it at the end of this video. Finish your layout by adding vegetation of all kinds from the Woodland Scenics landscape system. It's fun to do, and it's impossible to make a mistake. Here's an overview of that system.
First, cover the entire area with either green blend or earth blend turf. Then sprinkle fine turfs of various other colors to provide the short ground cover. By sprinkling a variety of colors, you can indicate drier or wetter areas. Add vegetation of various heights and texture with products such as coarse turfs and clump foliage. Mist with scenic cement to anchor it. Even plant some field grass. Finally, plant some trees. You can make your own with the realistic tree kits. Just twist the armature to the shape you want, dab with glue, and dip in clump foliage. Plant the trees. You can buy assembled ready-made trees in boxes or in value packs for the best tree bargain anywhere. With Woodland Scenics, no two trees are ever exactly alike. When your layout is finished, you can paint the exterior with a flat paint in your choice of color. Your layout is almost ready for action. Just add some buildings. These are from DPM. And add some interesting scenes to bring it to life. It's never been easier to realize your dream. A complete layout built by you. Anyone can do it anywhere, and it's fun when you build it the Woodland Scenics way. For complete information on terrain and landscaping, a manual and video are available. And for more information on subterrain, read the subterrain manual. Visit Woodland Scenics in one of the following ways. By mail, Woodland Scenics, P.O. Box 98, Lynn Creek, Missouri, 65052. Our website on the internet is www.woodlandscenics.com or you can email us at sales at woodlandscenics.com.